Should you get Warhammer Plus? Short answer, yes. Long answer, it's a bit more complicated than you'd think. I'm your host, Jonathan, always trying to teeter the line of a family-friendly video. Welcome to Mana Potion Tabletop. I've had Warhammer Plus for about eight months now, and for only $60 a year, or six bucks a month, I've had a good time with it. I know the only reason you want it is for the free mini. Either you're a scalper trying to make some cash, or you just want something special to show the guys at your local hobby shop. The minis usually cost more than the subscription itself on the aftermarket, so just by that fact, you're getting your money's worth. A year-long subscription allows you to pick one of two minis to get for free, shipping cost courtesy of GW. Either a 40k or Sigmar mini. Year 1 minis were both 40k, so let that be known. It is possible to get a year with only Sigmar minis. To be honest, the Sigmar mini this year was pretty mid. I nearly got it because it came with 5 minis total. Midar, Dagfane, or whatever his name is, then four other little dudes, which looks really cool. I got Azarak the Annihilator, because it was the only 40k mini I could choose this year, and I know someone with a world leader army. Why not pass along something cool for them to have? I would have said if it didn't resell for 80 plus dollars on eBay. Get shit on loser, L. I'm reselling that shit so I can buy the new 40k drops. I'm looking at you, Commander Farsight. Side note before we move on. Each year they release two new models and shelve the other two. Year one models were by far the best. That isn't saying much as there are currently a total of four ever made. There was an orc and an assassin. I was just a few months late to get the orc model for Diesel. I also had an issue where I couldn't redeem my model on the GW website, but the GW customer service was decently good and within a week my issue was solved. And within a few days, I got my model. Warhammer Plus also gives you access to the Warhammer Vault. I guess if you're a 40k history buff or want the newest and oldest issues of White Dwarf, then this is valuable to you. But since I'm a Chad, I get all of my 40k lore from West Hammer and Major Kill. Warhammer Vault does not give you access to all the 40k codexes. You'll still need to purchase those yourself if you want since 10th edition rules are currently free. Are you thirsty? I know I am. Brew yourself up a fresh pot of Mana Potion Coffee Co's wonderful lineup. Use code D10 at checkout to get 10% off your order. The Warhammer 40k app is also accessible by plus subscribers. Alternatively, the Sigmar app is as well, but currently that's in beta. Both apps give you access to the codexes provided you have the code to access them. Each codex is up to date with its current version. They also have the core rulebook to play 40k. But who cares now? This script was written prior to 10th edition, but I'm leaving it in because I suspect it'll work the same way after 10th edition drops. For someone who hasn't played much 40k, it makes putting together a detachment and learning the rules simple. The UI is nice and it has pictures for you to visualize your units. Even if you don't own the codex to that army, you can still put together and see the point by of each army. I play Tau, but I can still put together an orc detachment. I just can't customize them as much or see all their stats like my Tau detachment. I know other services do this, but I already pay for it, so why not use it? The Warhammer TV service could have its own video it has so much to talk about. For later use, I'll only go over the surface of what you'll get and some of my favorite and least favorite shows they have. I'll be calling it 40k TV from now on to save on time. If you're getting the subscription purely for 40k TV, then you'll have about a week or two worth of animations to watch, assuming you don't binge it all in one weekend. Just remember to go to the gym between your debauchery. It also has some painting tutorials, learn to play videos of every Warhammer project from Necromunda to Blood Bowl, lore videos, and battle reports. It's pretty okay. A lot of the stuff on 40k TV can be found from other creators on YouTube. I would tend to say that stuff is better on YouTube since it's free and you get to see your favorite personalities do something you enjoy. But the production quality is really high and who else better to tell the 40k lore than the people who made it. But this isn't why 40k TV is so good. The animated series and shorts are great. However, they are not all fantastic. The interrogator had me coming back for more. Living means learning to do what's necessary. And what's necessary can often feel like swallowing a razor blade. Hammer and Bolter got better each episode I watched. Get up, soldier. No wallowing in the filth. Everyone here stands. And Iron Within was mid, but enjoyable. The Exodite 
exists. Yes, I know, people die and stories can't always play out in the grim darkness of the future. But luckily, I live in a time where I can lose $3,000 in crypto and laugh about it. Animation slapped, make it longer, and don't trust people in big power armor. Hammer and Bolter is the best series they have on 40k TV. The first episode sucks, like it really sucks. I stopped watching it 5 minutes in, it was that bad. The dude looks like Play-Doh stuffed into power armor. But as the anthology goes on, it gets better. Kadia Stands and Kill Protocol are great. They're back to back, so when you get to them, it's a lovely treat among the rest of the series. If you get Warhammer Plus for one reason and one reason alone, do it for Hammer and Bolter. The Interrogator is a one hour and 52 minute heavenly slice of cake if I liked cake. It's all in black and white, but the animation is pretty decent and the voice acting is phenomenal. It's a detective-like story about a former Inquisitor's apprentice. When you go and watch it, flip to the last episode in the series to watch the final cut. All nine episodes are stitched together to make the viewing experience more enjoyable. 40K TV is constantly working on new series. Right now, I'm waiting for the Pharaoh's Nexus to come out summer 2023. Never have I wanted a mommy space nun to dom me more. Although, I feel that's a bit heretical. Alright, fire! Final thoughts. Yes, it's worth it. The two leading factors being the free mini and Warhammer TV. My suggestion is to cop up the $60 for a year membership since it's cheaper than monthly. I've been Jonathan, and no mom, it's not a phase. I will continue to buy Warhammer minis. If you like this video, maybe you should watch me expose dice companies for overcharging you. Oh, also, you should like and subscribe.